Hello guys. In this class now, let's now do a series of classes on scalars and vector. Now, since we have talked about what are the objectives we need to know on scalars and vector, what do they expect us to know? Let's go straight. In this class, we'll discuss scalar and vector, while in next class, we now want to talk about the resolutions of scalar. So let's start with the first guy, which will be our scalars and words and vectors. This will be our words, our lesson one, scalars and vectors. Now, let's start. Now, let's now introduce what's the concept of scalar. I'll start by saying that a physical quantity which have just magnitude or numerical value is said to be called a scalar quantity. Any physical quantity which have only magnitude or what numerical value now, only magnitude, the word magnitude or numerical value, they are talking about the same thing. In other words, we can attach a number to it. It be it mass, be it length, we can attach a number to it. Any quantity, talking about a physical quantity that have magnitude and numerical value is said to be called a what a scalar. Once again, what's a scalar? These are physical quantities that have only what numerical value or they have what magnitude. Now, let's say for example this ball. Now we can see that the size of this ball is 20. So if we see that the size of this ball is 20 meter, now that meter there talks about length. Are you seeing that? Because we can attach a value to it, talking about the size, we therefore see that that size in essence the word is a scalar quantity. Why? Because we can add a word in magnitude or what numerical value. The word magnitude talks about size, talks about what numerical value. Are you seeing that? So what are scalar quantities for the last time? These are physical quantities which have only magnitude or you say they have what numerical value. If you say you got that, let's now talk about the concept of scalar. Now, I would like you to know that scalars are added or subtracted by ordinary algebraic word method. They are added or subtracted by ordinary algebraic method. When we talk about ordinary algebraic method, we are talking about just simply adding them, that like you add them or you what you subtract them. No more additional subtraction. Are you seeing that? But when we get to vector, it is not so. Vectors are added by uh, are added or subtracted by geometric word means. When we talk about geometric means, talking about your scale. Sine rule, pythangoras theory, and the rest. But how are scalars and how are scalars subtracted or added? We said that scalars are subtracted or added by ordinary algebraic work method. Now, give me some uh, some scalar quantities and let's add them. Let's say, for example, we have um, volume. Volume has to do with length and length, so it's a scalar word quantity. Now we're told to add this volume now: five plus ten centimeter cube, which is equal to what fifteen centimeter centimeter cube. How do we get fifteen? We just added them. Or, for example, you are giving 18 centimeter cube minus 4 centimeter cube, which is equal to 14 centimeter cube. How do we get 14? We just subtracted them. That's scalars for you. They can be added or subtracted by ordinary algebraic word method. Are you seeing that? Now, what of if it is mass? Hope you know mass is a scalar quantity. We're going to list them. So, let's say, for example, we're giving mass and we're giving 5 gram plus 8 gram which is uh, 5 gram plus 6 gram, which is giving you what 8 gram, or you are giving your 6 gram minus 2 gram, which is going to give you what 4 gram. You can see that this gives us what ordinary answers, which are 15, 14, 8. And how do we get them? Just ordinary addition or what subtraction. So if they ask in the exam, how can we add or subtract scalar? Just tell them ordinary algebraic word method. But we said that this is not safe for what for vectors. When we get to vectors, we're going to see what to use. You can't add vectors, but you can't add them or subtract them by using ordinary algebraic method. We say, what do we use? We use what geometric, geometric code method. Do you understand now? Practically, let's now go to vectors. What are vectors? Vectors are simply physical quantities that have both magnitude. Magnitude talk about size, right? Or numerical value. And what direction? They have two things. Number one, they have magnitude. They have what direction? So, if any physical quantity that have both magnitude, magnitude talk about size, or they have what your direction is said to be called your what your vector. That's the difference between a scalar and a vector. We say scalar, they just they just have only magnitude. Magnitude is the same thing as size or the same thing as numerical value. But when we talk about vectors, they have magnitude, they have numerical value, they also have what to call your your direction. Do you understand? Let's see, bring that ball. Now look at this ball. This ball has a size of 420, that's the magnitude. Now, that's not just enough. You can see that this ball is moving towards this direction. Because it has one, let's call this one, magnitude and two, direction. We said this is called the word in vector word quantity. So what's a vector quantity? Quantity that has magnitude and has what direction. Do you 
understand that. Now, let's now go to the concept of photo object. Unlike your scalar quantity, we said vector quantities can be represented in terms of what magnitude and what direction. Are you seeing that they have magnitude? When you talk about their size, they have what direction. For example, we said the bed is going to fly 100 kilometers in the direction of north east direction. Now, let's practically see that. Let's say this is your cardinal point. You can see north, south, east, and west. Let's say this is the bed. Are you seeing that? How do we trace that? You can see now. This tells you that this is talking about the, world, the size or the distance the bed cover, 100 word kilometer. And what direction is that telling you? It's in north eastward direction. That's why it's coming from the center. We're going to talk about how to resolve vector in vector resolution. Do you understand? But what we are trying to say under the concept of vector that every vector have magnitude and they also are what we call what your direction. Do you understand? Now, if practically you say you understand, I would like you to know that vectors can be added or subtracted by geometrical method. On the geometrical method, there are many geometrical methods. Number one, we're going to talk about your Pythagoras theorem, which is discovered in other sides, but the sum squared the two side. We're going to talk about your your cosine rule, which is a square plus b square plus or minus two a b cos theta. Are you seeing that? We can also use sine rule, or we can also use vector reservation. We're going to talk about this, but all those things I just talked about, I want to call your word geometric word method. But we said your scalar quantities are added by ordinary word algebraic method. Please, if they ask you, what's the difference between scalar vector number one? What are the bits? The complete series of classes, right? As far as your syllabus is concerned regarding your jam awaek. Everything has been covered in details for you in the LearnLifts app. And guess what? The sweet part is that you have access to your CBT, right? You have access to your video lessons. You have access to your notes. You have access to your past questions. Everything from the beginning to the end is directly in the LearnLift app for you. So all you have to do is just mark down to Play Store or App Store and download the LearnLift app where you follow all your classes from the beginning to the end. A quick one before we move. Let's get back to class. Enjoy. Well, scalars have direction. Uh, scalars have magnitude, but no direction. Vectors have magnitude and direction. Scalars can be added by ordinary algebraic method, but vectors can be added by geometric rule method. What are the geometric methods? Say Pythagoras theory, your sine rule, your cosine rule, and so on and so forth. Do you understand that? Now, the question is how do we represent vectors? Of course, we said two things to represent vectors. You have magnitude and you have what direction. So take note that vectors can be represented with lines and arrow, lines and arrows. Now, what's the interpretation of the line? The line there will talk about the word, the magnitude. Are you seeing all the size? why the the arrow there is going to talk about the word the direction so the line represent the word the size or the numerical value size or the numerical value why the arrow is going to represent the word the direction now let's practically give an example you can see this that on this diagram you can see the head and the tail which is showing the words the arrow are you seeing that how was the arrow signifying we said that this is the arrow now we can see that the arrow is showing the word the direction why the line is showing the word the magnitude. Magnitude talk about the size. Are you seeing that? So anytime I do like this, practically I do this. This is the direction, let's say direction of east. Like let's say this 20 to 20 meter. This is the magnitude and this is the word the direction. So take note that um, your vectors are represented with lines and arrow. We said the lines talk about the word the magnitude while the arrows talk about the word the direction. Do you understand? Very interesting class. Now let's now leave the scalars and let's now talk about the word the vectors. What the scalars what the vector number one? Mass. Mass is a scalar quantity while vector is a word. Uh, mass is a scalar quantity while weight and force is a word is a vector quantity. Are you seeing that? Mass is a scalar quantity. Your weight and vectors are your what? Your weight is a word vector quantity. And now it's your word your distance. Either your distance, your length, or your altitude, they are scalars. Why your displacement is a what is a vector? Do you understand that? Now you need to practice them because when we get to past question segment, it will make you know it the more. When we are done with this, I'm going to take some past question, but run to the note. Answer all the past question on that example of scalar and vector. There are 20. That's minus calculations. This is just ordinary theory first, like ordinary MCQ. So you go there, you ensure you answer all of them. So take note that we also have your speed. Speed is scalar, why your velocity is what is vector. We have your time. Time is scalar, why acceleration is what is vector. Don't forget mass, distance, length, time, speed, time. 
Are you seeing that? Now, take note that your area through your volume is said to be what scalar. Why moment down is said to be what depth. Why your temperature scalar, your moment or your torque is said to be what vector. So take note that momentum, moment torque, they are said to be what vectors. Acceleration vectors, this velocity vector, displacement vector, weight and force vectors. Do you understand? I told you what to make you understand it is the past question. Are you seeing that? Because you ask yourself, how do I cram all this? Is take the past question, you know that jam and why follow one pattern. Are you seeing that? Now, practically, let's see, continue. We have your pressure and your density. Here we have your electric feed, pressure density. We have electric feed. We have work energy and power. Take note that topic, work energy and power. Anytime you hear work energy and power, what do you come to your mind? All of them are scalars. Work energy and power, scalars. Work energy and power. Please, take note of this is a constant past question. Work energy and power, scalar. Work energy and power, scalar. Now, talking about your electric current, electric charge, uh, EMF and potential difference. You know, people want to talk about them electricity. So, charge current voltage and emf all of them are your what are your scalars are you seeing that so thinking about that why magnetic flux is a what is in vector word do you understand so your rsc circuit in your rsc we're going to talk about that's the last topic rsc we won't talk about your inductor your capacitors take note that rsc are what are scalars rsc are scalars so rsc are scalars your reactance and your impedance See on ROSC, all of them are what are scalars. And the last is your MA, that's your work. That's, uh, as I say, work, your um, machines. So, mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, and efficiency, all of them are said to become your what? Your scalars. Do you understand? So, these are examples of scalars. Take note about them. Now, we're going to take past question. Past question will make us know them. You see, these things that we're asking to learn, you are saying it's difficult. When you go take the past question, you will know exactly what they are. The apps. Do you understand? Let's start with Jam 980 question 11. The question says that which of the following physical quantities is not a vector? It's not. That means all of them are vector except one. Option A is velocity. We talk about work. C talk about force. D talk about electric field intensity. And E talk about magnetic induction. Now try to check them one after the other. Velocity is vector. Now force is vector. Electric field intensity is vector. Magnetic induction is vector. I told you work energy and power are scalars. So work energy and work power. Work energy is not a vector, it's a scalar. So from B becomes a word the answer. Do you understand that? Let's take another question. Jam 9081, question 15. The question says an example of a scalar quantity is which of them is scalar. Option A say velocity. B said width. C talk about electric charge. D talk about acceleration to gravity. And D E talk about what method. Of course, we said that velocity is vector. Velocity is vector. Weight is vector. As as a, a acceleration to gravity is vector, momentum is vector. But we said electric charge, electric current, electric voltage, and EMF, all of them are said to be worse scalar. So this electric charge is an example of a worse scalar. Making option C to be called the word. Yes. You see the way I'm breaking now. I told you past question will show you. So go to the past question, finish off, fam. Finish off. Go to the MCQ plate, fam. Are you seeing that? Now let's go to question three. The question says 1983, question two. The question says that which of the following is not a vector quantity? Is not a vector. Option A is force, B said altitude, C said width, D said displacement, and E talk about solution. Choose your answer fast. Choose your answer fast. Choose your answer. Post it and choose your answer. Now, after, I believe you have posted because I'm choosing my own answer now. It can be force. Force is a vector. Right? Weight is a vector. Displacement is a vector, solution is a vector. What about we said length, height, altitude? All of them are said to be called your what your scalar. So this is a set. It's not a word, it's not a vector. Making option B to become the word. The answer. Are you getting how many of you have gotten all? Okay, let's take another question. Jam 1988, question 5. The question says that which of the following quantities are scalars? Which of them are scalar? It is C electric potential. That's I, electric potential, torque. Momentum, kinetic energy. Which of these are scalars? Choose. Of your choosing is say and one and two. B said this and this. This said this. Now look at it. First, first and foremost, you should know that work energy and power are all scalar. So this is scalar. Electric potential too is scalar because we say charge, current, voltage. That's voltage is electric potential now, and EMF. All of them are scalar, and we know that torque. Torque and moment are vector. Momentum is vector. So the answer is one and IV. One and IV, that's option word D. Making option D to become the answer. What's option D? 
one and ID. So the answer become what option? I hope you got it. Jam 989 question one. The question say which of the following is a set of vectors? Set of vectors. A said first mass moment. Mm. First mass moment. B talk about acceleration velocity moment. C talk about your mass with this. And this talk about mass volume and there's a which of these are set of scalar now let's go first is vector mass this is wrong because mass is a what is a scalar quantity let's go to the second so this first of all is wrong acceleration is vector velocity is vector moment is what vector okay let's see option c say mass mass wrong mass wrong so option b become the word as i'm making option b to become the word as i i hope you have not missed anyone. Did you get all? If you say you've gotten all, let's do down five questions. And three. The question says that a pair of physical quantities consisting of vector quantities only, vector only, is the acceleration and speed. B said displacement and torques. C talk about velocity and distance. And D talk about momentum and power. You talk about velo vectors, consisting of vectors. Speed is a scalar, so that's wrong. Now, yeah, this distance is scalar. Is that correct? Power is scalar. What can I jam power? So this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. So let's see. Displacement is vector. Torque is vector. Making option B to become the word the answer. Do you understand that? Jam 2001, question 9. The question says, which of the following causes entirely of vectors? A, C, velocity, magnetic flow, reaction. B, talk about tension, magnetic flow, mass. C, talk about displacement, impulse power, work energy. Work pressure and moment. Let's see. This is vectors only. Let's see option B. B talk about this mass. So this is wrong. Or mass is scalar. Power scalar. Work scalar. Then we'll give up the rest. So option is velocity, magnetic force, and reaction. That's making option A. Do you get? I mean, if you got all, then what should that you get? Uh, wrong to the notes. Answer all. I've given you all you want. Play the word. This CBT question. In our next class, we're going to talk about relative velocity. You know, when we listed the jam outline and the wire outline, we said these are the things we expected to know. To know. We know scalars and vector, we know relative velocity. That's what we're going to treat now in our next class, and that will become our lesson too. I'll see you in relative velocity class, but for now, peace out. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the Learn Lift app, whether on Play Store or App Store. And then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.